The key to performing an anatomical reconstruction is to ensure that you are able to see all the structures clearly. This is not possible with standard arthroscopy. Using routine anterior portals, the lateral space can be cleared of scar tissue in order to identify the ATFL remnant and its attachment to the fibula. From an accessory inferior portal, a guide wire is placed onto the common ATFL-CFL attachment under direct vision. The initial 4.5mm tunnel is overdrilled with a 6mm drill at the distal insertion. From a perineal tendinoscopy approach, the retinaculum is used as a landmark in order to identify the perineus bravis. The bed of the perineus bravis is debrided using a shaver from the inferior portal. This is loose synovial tissue and is easily cleared in order to identify the CFL remnant. The inferior lateral space is cleared further using the accessory and anterolateral portals. The junction of cartilage and bone on the tailor body marks the ATFL insertion. Under direct vision from the inferior portal, a guide wire and subsequent drill are placed percutaneously on the ATFL insertion and pass posteriorly into the tailor body. The video shows the junction of the tailor body and neck. The edge of the cartilage represents the ATFL tailor insertion. The guide wire and drill are passed under direct vision and the tunnel can be clearly seen. Next, the scope is switched to the anterolateral portal and the CFL attachment on the calcaneum is cleared with a shaver from the inferior portal. The debridement is carried out anterior to the CFL and the perineal tendons. Imaging can be used to confirm wire placement, but the intention is to place this directly onto the ligament footprints. The guide wire is then inserted, aiming posteriorly. This is then drilled over, taking care to protect the perineal tendons. A 1.4mm juggernaut bone anchor is inserted at the base of the Taylor tunnel taking care to keep the drill guide in place once drilled. This is a sliding anchor that will facilitate insertion of the tendon graft later. Next, a gracilis graft is prepared and passed through a zip loop. This is then inserted into the fibula tunnel and the button secured against the posterior cortex. The graft is drawn up into the tunnel by tightening the zip loop and the graft secured. The CFL is reconstructed by introducing the graft into the calcaneal tunnel. This is tensioned and it is fixed in place using a 6 by 25 millimeter organic core interference screw. Next, the ATFL reconstruction is drawn into the Taylor tunnel by pulling on one limb of the jug knot. An organic core interference screw is inserted whilst maintaining tension on the jug knot anchor. The final tension is performed manually by tightening the zip loop and the ends are then cut. The ATFL and then CFL can be clearly seen having been reconstructed. This anatomical reconstruction runs from the common origin of the ATFL-CFL to their respective footprints in order to reproduce natural kinematics.